she disappeared off the face of the earth. There was no trace of her. It is March 24th, 1998. Stacy Colbert graduated from Ohio State less than a year earlier and landed a job as a marketing assistant at American Electric Power in Columbus. But Stacy hadn't reported to work in days. You got the call from AEP that yep. she hadn't been to work. And so when you got that call, Oh, I knew there was a problem. Like, I knew right away, that's not Stacy. She doesn't not show up for work. Danielle dropped everything and ran to Stacy's apartment. And um, when I got there, there obviously was something wrong. All of her stuff was there. She wasn't there. The door was kind of creaked open. Everything was there. Her car was there. Her clothes were there. Danielle called the police. It was a nightmare. That night was a nightmare. As a mother, for you to get that call from Danielle that something was wrong, something went wrong with Stacy, what was that reaction like? I mean, it literally is like a punch in the stomach. And you can't breathe, and you can't think, and you're in shock. And then I think the next hardest phone call was to call my father and say, you know, that Stacy is missing and you know and 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 he's like what do you mean missing did she not come home and and so that was a very difficult phone call is the two of you right here yep that's us Stacy and her big sister Danielle were born just three years apart and grew up in the small town of Charleston Illinois it really gave you a, a feeling of safe, safety because uh, you knew everyone there and, um, you know, neighbors helped neighbors out, so. What was she like? Oh, stay. she was very athletic. So she was always involved in soccer, softball, track, um, then cheerleading and... Um, tennis. Tennis, oh yes, tennis. She, was, she actually lettered varsity lettered her freshman year. She was very passionate about things that she liked and had a heart of gold. Yeah. And so when, Yeah, she didn't do anything halfway. It was no. either all or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> when Stacy left home, she followed in her big sister's footsteps and became a Buckeye. Stacy and I, when Danielle was there, we would go visit her and sleep on the floor of her dorm room. <laughs> I was a lot yeah. younger then. But <laughs> uh, I encouraged her to rush sorority, and um, of course, I should never have encouraged her to do anything because normally that, <laughs> normally whatever I say she should do, she tries to do the opposite of. But um, <laughs> but it turned out to be an amazing thing for her. She had these amazing girlfriends that she met as part of the rush who um, surrounded her with love and encouragement. The last person to see Stacy alive was a pizza delivery man on Saturday, March 21st, who brought breadsticks to her door. He didn't see anyone else, but told police he had a strong feeling she wasn't alone. A box of half-eaten breadsticks was found on Stacy's kitchen table. We're told that the neighbor heard screams, didn't do anything about it. We didn't know if she had died that night. Right. We didn't know if, if maybe it was something else. It wasn't really what they heard. It wasn't from our apartment. So, you know, you tell yourself, well, maybe that didn't happen. Maybe she's okay. When they responded to that apartment, they treated this as a homicide scene. Mm -hmm. They had homicide investigators on the scene that day. So from day one, this was treated as a priority case. Every day, yeah. you know, 24 hours a day, you are thinking, is she alive? Is she safe? Is she hurt? Days turned into years. With this, we had no evidence whatsoever, yeah. no clothing or anything. Until a break in the case six years later. Back in uh, November of 2004, mm -hmm. a hunter was looking for his lost hunting dog, is my understanding, and he was along a wooded area on 257 North near uh, 37, State Route 37, and he had come across what he believed was a human skull. It was Stacy. A family's worst fear had come true when a coroner matched the remains using dental records. Unfortunately, Delaware County a lot of times turns out to be what we refer to as a dumping ground for bodies. Mm -hmm. And had that uh, hunter not stumbled upon her remains, we wouldn't 
I wouldn't even know about it today. What was your reaction when you got that phone, that confirmation call? Um, you know, it made me realize how much hope that I had. Right. And it was, it shut the door on that. All the memories post that are bittersweet. So it's hard, it's, it's hard to go back. 16 years since Stacy's case landed on his desk, Detective Bessinger is still searching for her killer. I answered to Danielle and I answered to Stacy. You know, um, unfortunately, she's not here to tell us what happened. And, you know, we need to figure that out. If anyone's going to get to the next stage where they would have someone, they'd have enough evidence to charge somebody, he was, he's going to do it. A daughter lost, a sister taken, life will never be the same. It's 20 years, but it's always affecting you.